Hello and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending July 25th, 2020. All our anime announcements this week feature a common thread of short, slice-of-life focused themes, which sounds like just what we need amidst the chaos of life right now. First up, Bandai Namco's toy and merchandise uh, branch, Bandai Spirits, announced this week that a television anime is in the works featuring their Capybara character, Capybara-san. That's right. The anime series will celebrate the character's 15th anniversary and is set to start airing on October 9th during a weekly children's variety block. Imagine that, given the art style. The anime will be directed at Shine Animation and L'Esprit by Tomohiro Tsukimasato, who also directed the Guditama anime, among others. Capybara-san was developed back in 2002 by Bandai Spirit's female team, Triworks. He and his cast of cute and cuddly friends have featured since then in a long-running line of merchandise, as well as several manga adaptations. On Sunday, the Toy Tokusatsu fan club announced that the live-action Kamen Rider Zero One TV series is inspiring a short net anime spin-off. Fans didn't have long to wait as the first episode began airing for the club's subscribers on Thursday. The series title does a great job of telling us exactly what to expect from the show. It's called Kamen Rider Zero One Short Anime Everyone's Daily Life. <laughs> Along with the announcement, a short trailer was posted previewing the first episode, which features the artificial intelligence is guiding protagonist Aruto around the hidden intelligence building. Ooh. Kamen Rider Zero One premiered last September and is the first Kamen Rider television series in Japan's current Reiwa era. So things there are a-changing. Last up in our brief anime announcements this week, a sequel is on the way for the short-form slice-of-life comedy series based on the Strike Witches franchise. The original Strike Witches 501st Joint Fighter Wing Take-Off anime told stories from the daily adventures of the Strike Witches team in between their world-saving pantsless battles. The sequel, World Witches Take Off, uh -huh, will debut sometime in 2021 and feature an expanded cast of characters. The anime is based on a manga series and will feature the original cast of Strike Witches reprising their voice roles, as well as direction by Fumio Ito and animation producer by Aka Efe and Giga Production. Crunchyroll streams the first takeoff series and it describes that plot as follows, quote, Strike Witches, the 501st Joint Fighter Wing Girls, are back from battle and ready to relax as best they can. War with a deadly Nuroi won't last forever, but one thing is certain, the war on laundry is eternal. Join these aerial combat cuties in a down-to-earth series highlighting the team's hijinks between missions, end quote. What could be cuter? Japanese pop culture media outlet and event promoter OtaQuest has teamed up with Anime Central to offer yet another virtual anime con. Yay! By this point, people who've been attending most of these online cons have probably been to more conventions this year than the rest of their lives combined. My goodness. Ota Quest Connect is set to take place on August 15th and 16th, just a few weeks away, and will feature the usual convention fair with exclusive interviews and panels, musical performances, and a specially curated online shop, as well as activity on both Twitch and Discord. The guest list is pretty impressive so far. Cowboy Bebop and Escaflone composer Yoko Kano, director and designer Shinji Aramaki, and B-Stars mangaka Paru Itagaki are all set to attend, among several others. The con will also feature a concert on both nights with different musician lineups for each. Saturday's musical event will be an online version of OtaQuest recurring OtaQuest double slash plugged in DJ and club events, while Sunday will feature three rising J-pop and rock groups. Sadly sounds like no Yoko Kano. OtaQuest itself was founded in 2017, with the goal of connecting different aspects of the Japanese pop culture world and its iconic creators more directly with fans in the United States. 
The project features a website with news and monthly industry interviews, as well as participation in live events and conventions. So that should be that should be pretty good, hopefully. Speaking of music, fans of the music from several of Sunrise's iconic anime series officially have a lot more to add to their streaming library. As of this week, a total of 549 theme songs and soundtrack tunes have been added to major streaming services. These tracks were produced and released by Flying Dog for Sunrise's anime and include music from a few series you might have heard of, like Cowboy Bebop, Vision of Escaflone, and Code Geass, along with several others. Pretty much every major music service now has the albums available, including Apple, Amazon, and Google Music, Spotify, and several other international providers. A good thing. The tracks went up everywhere as of yesterday, just in time for anyone looking to add a little more 1, 2, 3, Let's Jam to their weekend activities. Now, you might remember all the way back in February when an Australian senator called for a review of anime and manga being broadcast in the country because of possible depictions of child exploitation. Well, it seems these protests are still going strong and gaining some traction as of this week. The Sydney branch of the book's Kinokuniya book uh, store chain has officially removed seven manga titles from its shelves after receiving a formal written complaint from South Australian legislator Connie Bonaros. Bonaros wrote a letter to the store expressing concerns that they were hosting, quote, child pornography material, end quote, and called for removal of the offensive books, but did not specify exact titles. Kinokuniya's vice president, Keijiro Mori, responded and confirmed that they had removed seven titles from the Sydney store including Ero Manga Sensei, Sword Art Online, Goblin Slayer, and No Game No Life. Mori also noted that Kinokuniya is in communication with the Australian Classification Board about the issue and that, quote, in terms of our action globally, wherever our stores are situated, we respect local law and culture and make ordering decisions respectively and accordingly, end quote. In Australia, media depicting underage characters has been judged the same regardless of whether it depicts live action or drawn characters, whereas in Japan, fictional depictions like manga and anime are exempt from the current child exploitation laws. And by the way, that Australian standard is pretty much the same as it is in America. Now, there's not exactly a shortage of anime-themed clothes and accessories in the world, but there's no such thing as too much anime merchandise, right? Katakawa and Kara Ani clearly think so. The two have officially teamed up as of this week to launch a new anime-themed apparel brand called E-Moon because nothing anime-related can just have a normal name anymore. That's four O's, by the way. The brand aims to create fashion items that are appropriate for wear in everyday life and will sell goods through Katakawa's web stores both domestically and internationally. So far internationally, the line has released a set of Bungo Stray Dogs stoles or scarves, each based around a different main character, and a set of ReZero backpacks, Rem, Ram, and Emilia. The Japanese web stores are also offering wristwatches based on ReZero and Overlord, but those are not listed for international sales as of yet. Probably differences in time calculations and such. Now, the Fate Extra series is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year and is bringing fans some fun throwback games to celebrate. A special collector's box set, including both Fate Extella games, is being released for the anniversary and will include a new hands-on way to keep your own heroic servant by your side, another anime Tamagotchi. That's right, the Extellachi will let fans raise more than 30 different serv servants from the game, including the ever-popular Nero and Tamamo no Mae. The set will release for both PS4 and Nintendo Switch, but will come in limited numbers, so fans hoping to get their own mini-servant will have to act fast once the official release date is announced. 
For those who are unable to pick up their own Extelachi, there is another way to play with your own Pixel Heroic Servant, a browser game based on the classic arcade favorite Dig Dug. Players will guide Fate Characters BB through a space uh, Fate Character BB through a space-themed version of the original game, digging through levels to collect encryption keys and take control of the Moon Cell Automaton. The mini game will be available on the Tight Moon Studio BB website through December, so you arcade game fans have got plenty of time to shoot for a high score. What is it with Tamagotchi in Japan? Just gotta ask. <clears throat> Last up this week, if we're not able to go participate in the usual summer activities this year, at least we can talk to a favorite waifu about them. Two special events are coming to the Isekai app, where fans can have conversations with a voiced live 2D version of Megumin from Konosuba. Sorry, Konosuba. In the new events, users will talk to Megumin about classic summer activities, like going to the beach and visiting summer festivals. The events feature recorded conversations with Megumin through her voice actress Rie Takahashi, as well as new expressions and visuals, including Megumin dressed up for your imaginary beach trip in her bathing suit. The beach event is on now through August 3rd, and the festival event will follow immediately after and run through the 17th. The application is available in 50 countries, that's 5-0 across the world, and has an available English subtitle pack, as well as alarm functions and a clock, in case a cute Megaman in your phone who responds when you talk to her wasn't enough. The app also opens with a character selection screen, even though currently Megaman is the only option, so perhaps other Isekai girls will be added in the future. Guess we'll have to wait and find out. That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching.